Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakwadash, and double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you I came out there who pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. And as well as to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. And it's the brother Kwa Rabad from the GMS Houston camp. And um, I want to go into another lesson. And um, what I want to speak in this one uh, is going into how the Heavenly Father have sent out the last message to the world. You know, the last warning to the world, man. Hey, whether we specifically speaking about the, the whole world of Israel, that cosmos, or the Oikomene, you know, the whole inhabited earth. You know, because what con is contained in this message that uh, that's being pushed out last, right? That the Heavenly Father got his prophets pushing out. Again, he had raised prophets up in these last times. For the last time, you see? <laughs> For their last message, man. And in this message, it contains what? First and foremost, prophecy. And with prophecy comes judgment. With prophecy comes salvation. Yeah, as I say, the gospel, you got good and bad to it. Good news for us, bad news for them. You know, but in this, it's the fear and terror of the Lord that's about to be even further pushed in the earth as uh, prophecy uh, continue to uh, come to pass. You know, and that's obviously what I want to speak on real briefly is how the Heavenly Father raised up, raised up his prophets once again to push this last message into the earth, man. You know, and look, you you look in times past, you had other so-called doctrines, uh, uh, truths, as they were saying as well, which we know is one truth. You know, uh, Christianity, all these different for religions, you know, uh, um, organizations, Black Panthers. You had many people who raised up, you know, and try to change the world, try to, as they say, a revolution or so, um, or uprising. But it never came to pass. But what's going to allow all that to come to pass? Which is this word, this true doctrine, the only one that matters, being brought forth in the end. You see? Hey, like um, like in the book of Luke, I, I believe the Apostle Cabal did a lesson on this before too. But how uh, Yahweh Shai, and I get into the scriptures real quick, but Yahweh Shai went to that wedding feast and he had turned the water to wine. And we know that this, this truth, this doctrine is symbolic unto wine. You know, he brought it to the, because they ran out of wine. <laughs> Just like today, hey, everybody went through each doctrine. Everybody heard all these beliefs. It didn't bring the end. It wasn't real. You know, these different religions and guys of these different religions, we come to find out here in the end, they're not real. Jesus ain't doing nothing. You see, so going back to your house, he ran out of wine and he had to make more. And he brought it to the, uh, to the bridegroom of the feast. And he, what he said, he said, usually everybody bring the good wine first and then the, the bad after. He said, but y'all saved the best wine for last, right? The Heavenly Father have saved this best wine, this best message, this real truth, the only truth for last. And it's now being pushed out on the earth. And they have reached the four corners, as it said, Matthew 24 and 14. You know, I believe it's 14. But when this gospel, this message, this warning Go out into the world, then show the end come. And that's why we find ourselves here at the end of the world. And everybody's starting to find out this message. Whether they've been heard about it or just hearing about it. You got the likes of these celebrities speaking on it now. It's on social media platforms. It's all on YouTube. It's on shit, even ESPN now. Mainstream media. You know? Hey, so we coming to the time where, look, nobody will be able to have an excuse. As the scriptures say, have they not heard? Yes, verily. You know, everybody heard, but let's um, and it's, it's gonna be spread even more. But let's start right here. So, I like it for the long intro. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 36. And I'm gonna start at 14. It says, Fill Zion with thine unspeakable oracles. Let's start with the Heavenly Father giving his people the truth back. It says, And thy people with thy glory give testimony. Unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. 
And that's what we have been witnessing in the earth. You know, just speaking from our apostles, which they will believe the, the true men of heaven and father have sent out, the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. You know, and the elder brothers, the brothers on down, man. You see, but men going, been doing this work 30 years ago. You see, <laughs> raised up in Yahweh by Shimei Shai's name. They elders before that, you know. But again, we've been raised up to what? Bring forth this last one. As um, what it said about uh, Elijah, he was going to come. We had to get that in Malachi before the, 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 the destruction of the Lord. You know, but let's get this. Hey, even in this time, right, Elijah, he began this new song going out. He began the end of the last message, man. You know, but let's read this real quick. It says, um, give testimony unto those that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. You know, so the Lord have raised up his prophets again. It says, and reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful. You know, let me get this in the Malachi, as I just mentioned, because Elijah was sent to do the same thing. And again, going back to our apostles and elders, elders. Right, you had a man um, by the name of Elder Abba Bivens, which we believe through our faith, right, is that this man was Elijah coming back. Now it was said that Elijah was gonna have to come back again before that last message, <laughs> before the dreadful day of the Lord, and that was the man who began all this, be us being raised up today. Of course, starting with the heavenly Father Yahweh and Yahweh Shai by way of the Holy Spirit. But let's snag this real quick. This is a. Uh, so like it is a uh, Malachi chapter four. And I'm gonna get straight to the point. Malachi four and five. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Which you, again we know as El Daba Bivens. It says, Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he go come back with a message. That's the point. He coming back with a message. And this was that last one. Which the same message we pushing. You know? It says, And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. You know, go, going back to our apostles' elders. You know? the Those great men, as it said, I believe in Jeremiah the fifth tra chapter, who have been raised back up. You know, the likes of High Priest Ariad, King Masha, you know, um, Elder Yaquab, so on and so forth. You know, Elijah. Taught those men, those men taught our apostles and elders, and that's why we being taught today in this latter end. And through everybody being taught, hey, that's that Baruch 4, and it's in chapter 5 in Baruch, that we go come gathered together by the word of the Holy One. The elect is wait, uh, raising up and waking up here in these last days, the great awakening. And also this world is being condemned by the same message that's being pushed out. And it says, he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. You know, and that's what's about to happen soon. We're about to witness the Lord smite this earth with curses, many of them, many plagues, you know, many different forms of destruction. But the last one ended with that fire, those ICBM missiles, you know, and whatever other type of missile the Lord going to have shot, uh, shot off, you know, a fire from the chariot, so on and so forth. But that's what we are sent to one the earth about. You know? Like he's saying, uh, again, we are one inside people, but also the world. That is in Jeremiah. And we just, you know, flew on. Let me snag that in Jeremiah 28. This Jeremiah chapter 28 and 8. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries right the world is hearing this message it says and against great kingdoms babylon and great being the main one this is where that banner being lifted up on that high mountain it says um the prophets that have been before me and before they of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war of evil and of pestilence so the message still is the same today but now it's coming out in its um, true sense from the, the real men who was supposed to give it. As Yahweh Shai said, there was going to come a time when the, uh, the true worshipers shall worship the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. 
you know. Hey, again, this is the message that's warning about one of the last great, greatest prophets to come, the MOTB. Ain't no other doctrine or, or belief or religion been pushing everything as we've been pushing it and seeing it happening, man. The MOTB, famine, uh, 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 Esau, the, the, the devil, Esau Edom, the so-called white man being exposed, right? The, the, the global reset, all these things happening at once. And who knows how the Heavenly Father go turn it up from here on out. But again, nobody can't take, uh, can't say they didn't hear or they wasn't warned. Why? Because this message have been broadcast up across the four corners. You know, you know, you get an Amber Alert. Everybody in the area get it on their phone, right? So this message, everybody got this alert. Whether you're an Israelite, whether you're not an Israelite, everybody getting this alert. You know, what that is in the second measures. I said the truth that uh, have been so long without food. Let me see if I can see that. Bear with me. Okay, here it is. So the second measures, chapter six. And I'm going to start at 27. It says, for evil shall be put out. And deceit shall be quenched, right? That's what this doctrine did. It quenched other beliefs. You see? It quenched what these other people, you know, had in their mind on what was truth, what was right. Deceit. Hey, we finding out we ain't so-called niggas or Mexicans, you know, or Native Americans. We finding out we the Israelites, man. The true sons of God. That Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Yahweh, Shai, King David, all that's our descendants. By blood. You know, so this truth started quenching the lies in the earth, man. That's another thing this doctrine did. Hey, again, going back to the man um, at the wedding. He said, y'all brought out the best for last. In other words, we went through everything else, but this the one right here. This the doctrine from the heavens. This the doctrine that Yahweh Shah, when he, when he, when he uh, gave his life, was crucified, rose, those seals, was open. Truth was able to be open. The real truth, man. That was promised to be sent down by the Holy Spirit. That's what we now have received. Right? It says, as for truth, it shall flourish. And now we're seeing it flourishing again. It's on mainstream media. All these celebrities talking about it. You got believers in camps raising up across the four corners, speaking different languages, but believing in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, man. And this is without seeing major miracles happen this without seeing the apostles raise somebody from the dead this without seeing you know the, the, the elders give sight to the blind this without seeing miracles we have this uh uh great sum of people believing man so how much more when the lord endowed us and lord willing you know we received that that power but with the ability to perform miracles for those believers who, you know, said to believe to come in by miracles so they could come in. Just like in the time of the apostles, the acts of the apostles, you know, you had some people believe just by hearing the message. But once they started doing miracles and works, thousands, five thousands, three thousands would come in at once. And that was without social media. That was without the Internet and living in the age of things going viral. How much more? Or many believers will come in at once if they see a uh, brother doing uh, miracles and great works in the name of Yahweh Shai, man. Again, in the age that things go viral. You see, the Lord did say he's going to speed up this time. But let's finish it. So this um, 2 Ezra 6 and 28, it says, As for faith, it shall flourish, and corruption shall be overcome, and the truth shall which have been so long without fruit shall be declared. The truth that have been without fruit shall be declared, man. And all this time it's, it's been hidden as the apostles used that similitude of a, of a buoy in the water. You could put it down, you know, under the water, but eventually it's going to have to pop back up. You see? That's the same thing with this truth. They try to suppress it for as long as they could. But eventually, as it is written in Revelation 11, we ain't standing on our feet because of them. 
we standing on our feet now because the spirit of life from the heavenly father have entered into us, man. And that's why great fear is falling on these people. Matter of what that is, and um, I wanted to get this earlier about the Lord sending the apostles out last as it were appointed unto death because now this true message went out and that's what's going to force Esau hand to make his move. He can't let this word just go out just forever. <laughs> you see? Yahweh Shai said, if he be lifted up, all men will be drawn unto him. You see, you even look on comments in the section with the Kyrie Irving thing, our people, yeah, they proclaiming they're excited, saying, yeah, we the real Jews. Yeah, we the chosen people. But now more people are starting to find out Esau can't let this just, just flourish, man. Because as this go out, that make him look worse. That's why Revelation 12 and 17 written that the dragon, right, although he go come down with great wrath on the whole world, as it's saying that 12 verse in that chapter, but the last verse in that chapter said, but he specifically won't, the woman, which is Israel, and out of the woman, out of our people, the nation of Israel, he won't the ones who got this testimony, this truth, understand prophecy, and those who follow you, how about Shem, how I keep the commandments. That's who he want, because this is the ones who got that message to bring down his kingdom. You know? Yeah, you know how they say sticks and stones <laughs> break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, well, Hebrews 4 and 12 said that the word of the heavenly father is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And this is what, out of all the things that could have brought down America, which is going to lead to a physical destruction, but the Lord sent out men speaking to take this place down first. You know, like I said, he will be consumed by the spirit of the Lord's mouth, and then the ultimate destruction will come. But it all begins with what? Us speaking this word into existence, man. That last message. But let's snag this real quick in Corinthians, and I want it down. This first Corinthians chapter four and nine, it says, for I think that the most high have set forth us, the apostles last. Hey, again, what the man said at the wedding feast, y'all saved the best wine for last. Right. The heavenly father sent out his men last. He allowed all these other beliefs to go into the world first. He allowed people to believe in Christianity, think they had a man named Jesus. You see? He allowed people to, to go into Egyptology. And you, even these people, these motivational speakers and all that on social media, he allowed all these people to go out and do these things, say certain things. But eventually, when it came down to the end of the world, he was going to have his doctrine, the real truth, come out last and trump everything that was said before it. It says, for I think that the Most High have set forth us, the apostles, last. Starting with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And that's just what we believe, man. You know, the, the school of the prophets. And it's because think about it. There's only a, ain't no other group in the world. Because the scripture saying the end is going to be the apostles and prophets. <laughs> right? That the temple was built on the apostles and prophets. Yahweh Shah been a chief cornerstone. Just look in the earth. What other men, group of men, the leaders call them, or people call them the apostles, and the body of their believers believe they're the prophets and actually going out and prophesying daily. Come on, man. You see? I only know one other person called himself the apostle, and that's Geno Jennings. <laughs> you see? Come on, man. But let's finish this. So it says, For I think that the Most High have set forth us the apostles last, as it were appointed unto death. As it were appointed unto death, it says, For we are made a spectacle unto the world. Again, people, hey, we're on the highways and hedges looking foolish, right? But everybody now is intrigued. Everybody go get more into it. The more they put it on the news, the more people go look into it. And that's the thing, I was watching one of the elder Yashawamba lessons, and he was saying how Esau, he's scared to put this real message, this real truth, you know, that's coming from the brothers of Great Millstone, the brothers from, you know, Men of Valor, you know, brothers who teach the same doctrine. Because that's when Yahweh Shah, she really going to hear him. He got to put these other people like the, the ISUPKs or the Hebrews, the Negroes, and the Yah Israelites on the TV. He's trying to keep this real doctrine away from the world, man. 
It says, uh, right, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. That's just what I wanted in that. You know, but again, like Noah, Noah stood up. He condemned the world. Hey, he had that first message. <laughs> Get that. He had that he had a message too. You know, and we coming back and ended it off. You know? And again, it's not us, it's the Lord putting the spirit in us to do these things. But after this, and why I say the last message, because after this, ain't no other doctrine gonna go out. This is gonna take us into the next world to come. What we talking about going to be the same thing that's going to be in the next world to come. What we speaking is reality, man. Ain't nobody going to rise up ever again with another re religion, another belief after this one. Another message or warning to the world after this and we're going to be in the kingdom, living. As the scriptures say, Apostle Paul, I believe he said, this the last time. You know, this the last time. Let me snag this real quick concerning Noah. Hebrews 11 and 7, by faith, Noah being warned of the Most High of things that were not seen as yet, moves with fear. It ain't raining this time, but he was telling people of it, looking foolish out there in the sight of the people, a spectacle unto the world as he was trying to warn them. It says, prepare the ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world. You see? So he saved his house. That was the elect in that time, but the world got condemned from the same message, the same lot we fall in there. We hoping ourselves and our houses be saved as we condemn in this world, man. It says, uh, and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. You know, and I ended off on 2 Peter 3, because it says how Noah pushed that word, we pushing the, the same word. But we just talking about fire, and I ended this second Peter three and six, it says, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished in the time of Noah. That first death, that first message warning to the world. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now the society, this age we live in now, Esau kingdom. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. You see? And even going back to what we read in the Malachi about Elijah. This is going to be that warning that came before the Lord's wrath, before his destruction. Well, Peter saying the same thing. We here pushing it out in the end. The prophets have been raised up for the last time, man. It says, uh, let's read it again. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. And I'm going to end it off with this. Verse 13. Nevertheless, we saw, so although we know that destruction coming, right? We don't hope to be in that. It says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where we're in dwell of righteousness. You know? And that's, hey, again, and we about to see... You know, everything fulfilled, man. Everything be fulfilled. Everything unravel. You know, and hey, hey, as the scriptures say, when the Lord, hey, once he bring his wrath, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully he remember us for mercy. You know, but with that, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. We give all praise on and glory unto Yahweh. By Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Chakwadash. And double honors unto the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you I came out there who pushing his word with all truth and sincerity. And as well as to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. And keep fighting, keep pushing. And with that, shalom.